Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sean Purgal. I'm President of National University of Medical Sciences in this beautiful Spain. And today I wish to speak with you about three common health insurance frauds against manual osteopaths. As you know, in Canada, in the past decade or so, most insurance companies, extended health plan insurance companies now cover manual osteopathic care. Whenever there is insurance payment, there are some sort of frauds that happens either by the public or by the health professionals and the parties involved. Today, I wish to speak with you about three uh, common uh, health insurance frauds that happens against manual osteopaths. Uh, extended health plan insurance companies require associations in their websites to put the names, addresses, and license numbers of manual osteopaths uh, who belong to them, who are members of their associations. As such, the members of the public, the public members can find the license numbers, addresses of the insurer, uh, manual osteopaths across Canada. The first fraud that happens uh, quite commonly in Canada, and I wish to speak to you about it, is done by the public, and that is the public members who have extended health plan coverage through their work or when they purchase it privately, they switch for the license numbers and addresses of the manual osteopaths. And in Canada, the insurance company works on the reimbursement basis. So basically what the, uh, these uh, fraudsters, they do, they make a fake invoice with the name and addresses, address of the manual osteopath and the license number. And uh, it's a paid in full receipt and they submit this receipt to the insurance company and they get paid. They pretend they went for manual osteopathic care to these manual osteopaths and the insurance companies generally, they just send the payment to these people because it's on a reimbursement uh, basis. So they don't contact the clinic. Uh, the patients, uh, the person sends a bill uh, along the claim form along with the paid in full receipt to the insurance company and insurance company sends payments to them. That is a quite a common uh, fraud that is happening in Canada. To counter that, manual osteopaths generally we recommend to them to sign their invoice or stamp it with their own logo clinic logo so the insurance companies can get used to the know their signatures and their logo. The second type of fraud that happens is when the member of the public, the person who have uh, extended health plan insurance, the patient, he or she will go for one visit to a manual osteopath, pays for the services received, gets a copy of the invoice. With that copy of the invoice, he gets the signature of the manual osteopath, the license numbers, and the, uh, the logo of the clinic. So he makes a, a fake invoice, fake paid in full receipt, similar to that, and then submits that to the insurance company, pretending that he went for manual osteopathic care, that he paid for those services, and then the insurance company reimburses him or her. This is the second type of uh, sophisticated uh, health insurance fraud that happens against manual osteopaths in Canada. The third type of health insurance fraud that happens against manual osteopaths is by clinics who, who do fraud. These are different type of clinics, could be a motor vehicle accident, MVA clinics, could, could be extended health plan clinics. What they basically do, they hire a manual osteopath for a short period of time. This way they get to know the signature and uh, uh, the license number of the manual osteopath and then 
they let the manual also but go but they continue to use the name and license number of that manual osteopaths in billing insurance companies this usually they do with the member of public who want to commit fraud they they work together on a 50 50 basis uh, they they divide the, the treatment fees received so when the insurance company contact the pay the person the patient the policy holder he or she will say that yes he went to the clinic and uh, they ask the clinic if the patient went and they say yes meanwhile the manual also but no longer works in that clinic he or she is not aware that his uh, the, his uh, his name or license number is being used this is quite often that happens and i recommend to all manual osteopaths to always have a uh, have a notebook to uh, to mark down the dates and the names of all the patients they they treat uh, so they can uh, they can know exactly who they treated at what date also they should uh, let their associations know whenever they quit working uh, in a clinic they should let the association know that they no longer work in that clinic so any invoice received after that date from that clinic in their name it should not be accepted unfortunately insurance fraud is quite common in Canada and uh, that affects everybody the rates go up uh, the some professions get bad name a manual osteopathy fortunately uh, is very uh, trusted by insurance companies and the public uh, the rate of the fraud in the profession is rare it's not like other health professions that fraud happens uh, commonly in there but still uh, we teach a lot of ethics le lectures to our students and uh, to our students and uh, we want to make sure they know all the insurance policies uh, because that affects them greatly if they uh, make a mistake they can give themselves uh, they can get themselves blacklisted they can also get the profession uh, a bad reputation uh, I teach over 250 business lectures to my students that is why my students have annual income of hundred fifty thousand dollars per year which is sixty thousand dollars more than other manual osteopaths we provide a different unique education we focus a lot in improving our students make them better human beings and make them wealthier by the, uh, after graduation i teach them everything i know about business so uh, please be aware even though the rate of uh, fraud in manual osteopathy is rare but the, uh, still it happens so you should be aware you should have a list of all the patients you treated you should keep the association up to date with your uh, with your uh, uh, working address and uh, keep in mind on that so others cannot uh, cannot uh, use your name and license number for fraud purposes that's about it to, uh, for today thank you for watching this video wherever you are i wish you a happy healthy wealthy day and god bless namaste